Hello and welcome to a Star Wars Legion battle report. This is the, I think the first time I've done this video type of video before. So um, let's see how it goes. So recently I attended the 2023 Alpha Fortress Games Star Wars Legion Store Championship Tournament. A lot of words. Uh, <laughs> and there was a Worlds invite. We had 16 players able to attend. Uh, we had two drops after round one because I think they had something else to do that day. They just came in to make sure that they had the 16 players. Uh, legitimate drops. I believe both players lost both their games, so it's just kind of like, okay, well, we can't win anyway, so we'll head out. Even though the real reason is that they didn't have the uh, time to stay. And yeah, it was a really fun event. I had a good time. I was playing Tempest Force, uh, Imperial Battle Force with an Imperial Officer with improvised orders. Two units of Stormtroopers, each with Recon Intel, HH-12s, and one of them with the Imperial Officer personal upgrade. Uh, for the extra courage and Inspire 1, and then three speeder bikes with no upgrades, because they do not need that. And six scout troopers with situational awareness, prepared supplies, emergency transponders, and smoke grenades. The idea was to keep them alive as long as possible, because if they get like seven or eight hits rolled against them, after the cover and low profile, that's like five or four hits left, I can still wipe most of the unit. So having one or two dodge tokens keeps the unit alive at one or two minis which in turn lets that scout trooper run away and be an objective threat still. Uh, and he's still throwing two black dice with sharpshooter one, so he can put a wound through on anything or make it waste a dodge um, and just be in general annoying like that. So it was really good. I had a lot of success with it. It worked out pretty good. Um, it also means that if someone rolls like a critical one gun against you with no high velocity that you can just spin a dodge against it and not take a casualty, so it reduces any non-high velocity snipers to a lower degree of use than they would normally have. Um, but overall, I was also running a 10 point initiative bid, so I had the initiative bid for every game I ran, and that was really great. Because um, it let me know what cards do not work in my battle deck and which ones do. Um, yeah, so and this, there's very interesting reasons why that happened. Anyways, um, these are the tournament awards that we had. The Top 8 received the alternate Darth Vaders that you see there with the two tokens. There's also a bunch of other operatives and commanders from other factions. I actually get quite a bit there. Uh, everyone received a copy of the battle cards of the skirmish of, uh, battle decks and stuff, which is pretty cool. Those suppression tokens were given to all of the players. And you had a bronze, silver, and gold trophy for first, second, and third place. And that painted Darth Vader goes, went to best painted army, which my friend Kyle ended up earning because for his uh western clone troopers which looked very very cool um yeah he did a great job with them they turned out really well and yeah they just they just panned out uh other art cards included uh being able to pick between these one pip cards here that you see the top two players receive these metallic alternate art cards with the dice and also the tokens um all the rest of these cards were on this side of the table these alternate art of operatives or units that you can use are all cards that every single player from first to last got to pick out. Starting, of course, with the first players. The R2D2 card is amazing. Um, and it was really nice because it gave everyone an alternate art card, even if they didn't do too well. So, obviously, first players got to pick first. Uh, the Co Major Cody art card was the one I was trying to go for. I did not end up getting that card, someone else picked it out. So I instead picked out some commando droids for my friend who likes to run Separatist. And the and the alternate art upgrade card I picked out was the DLT-19X Sniper for my scout teams, because, you know, Sniper is cool. <laughs> and yeah, alternate art cards in general are pretty useful. I did like the um, Grogu Force Show card, I thought that was pretty cool. I was thinking about picking that one up, but I did not at the end of the day. And overall it was a fun tournament. I think I ended up in 8th place with a 1-2 to two record, which isn't great. Um, I made two pretty big mistakes my first game, so let's go through that story now. Game one went really well. It's actually up on the channel if you want to watch it. Uh, there are some recording issues, but otherwise than that, it's really good. Uh, the commentary is really nice, and I think everything is fully explained what you miss in between certain shots. I think it's like one or two units you miss their activations, but nothing too big a deal. I think one activation was like three, three speeder bikes you missed. They kind of just teleport up. You see a pile of damage on one of the characters, and you're like, okay, they shot that character. But, unfortunate, but next event we will get our cameras set up and make sure that they're not uh, stopping recording halfway through the game. <laughs> well, not halfway through the game. They're 
stopped me recording every like 10 minutes. It was weird. Anyways, the game, the objective of the game was payload. No, not payload, sorry. Recover the supplies, grabbing objectives, um, and disarray as was deployment and the condition was war weary again this is my deck war weary is great for my list because there's only one stormtrooper with courage one everything else in the list has courage two or is a vehicle um recover the supplies is perfect for scout troopers they love that objective uh until g notions drop and uh what is what else is it oh yeah disarray is perfect as well because with scout three most of the scout troopers will get to the center of the map regardless of which way they deploy it just splits up the enemy's forces in an unfavorable way for them uh, and that worked really well because half his forces got split up the enemy my opponent that game was an imperial player playing an atst item versa with a tl50 for range one to three and actually worked out really well for her she killed i think a couple of my units with that um or no not a couple she killed one of my units and did good wounds to a second unit uh, two E-Webs with Barrage Generators, two Short Trooper Units with Offensive Push, T-21B Heavy, and Targeting Scopes. And then each of them had either a Medical Droid, an FX-9 Medical Droid, or an Ostromech Droid. So one for the ATST, one for Healing Iden, um, and there was two of them, and one Mortar. It was kind of just like a cheap three dice here, kill the guy, and be cool type unit. Um, and what else did he have in his list? I think... Oh, he had Bosk as well. Yeah, Bosk was in the list, and uh, he died to speeder bikes. They kind of just ran over him and, yeah, did not apologize. <laughs> he also had... No, he didn't have anything else. That was it. That was his list. Yep. Um, yeah, it was a very quick game, though. My scouts pretty much just moved up to the objectives and claimed them really fast. Um, we had three objectives by round two. And by round three, we had four objectives. Uh, one of the scouts was able to get up to his deployment pretty fast and climb over a piece of terrain to grab the objective and then climb back over it at the start of next round. Uh, me playing the ambush card to get them the first activation. Um, that climb was super cheesy. And I was asking a ref about it, like, is this legal? And he's like, yes. And I'm like, dude, this is super cheesy. This is through a barricade over the side after I grab an objective. That's... Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't have a problem with climbing and grabbing objective, but with going through a barricade and then climbing objective, it was a little bit interesting. I think it's redunculous, but if it's a game mechanic, I guess I'll use it. Um, I think turn four, uh, he ended up conceding just because of the effect I was about to blow up his ATST and kill his mortar and reduce his list to three activations. I had previously killed both the short troopers and boss in turn two. So he was down to five activations to my 12 activation list, which was uh, not a good thing. Uh, I've noticed my list tends to just basically um, collapse on the opponent and just wipe out as many activations as possible. It's just to have a huge activation spread um, in attrition style, like control the center objective gameplays. Yeah, so round one went really well. Round two um, went pretty poorly. Um, it was the deployment was hemmed in the objective was breakthrough and the condition was hostile environment so staying close to terrain pieces to not remove suppression uh, on base contact uh, and that round went pretty bad for me um, not because I was outgunned or anything the Imperial well, it was another Imperialist uh, and this one had Boba Fett uh, Iden Versos Imperial Special Forces two sniper teams uh, scout Trooper Sniper Teams. Um, I University this time also had the Pulse Cannon, so technically there was three snipers in that list. Two units of Stormtroopers, both with HH-12s and Stormtrooper Specialists, which was very nice. And one unit of Short Troopers with a T-21B and a Medical Droid with a Mortar. And also an Imperial Officer. So a 10 activation list, so my 12. Um, I, because it was hemmed in in Breakthrough, I was able to get all my scouts and my speeders and my Imperial officer to one deployment zone. The issue was my two stormtroopers I deployed on the other side of my deployment zone, so I wasn't sure where he was deploying his units still, and uh, that did not end up working in my favor. Because um, those stormtroopers, I think one unit died round two, and the other unit was panicked round two and wasn't able to move. Well, they were able to move because they had courage too, it's just they were suppressed for a while, so they weren't able to move a whole lot. Um, and I knew what I had to do was kill a unit of stormtroopers. I had the unit down to one guy left. And I kept activating my speeder bikes too early. 
Um, I knew I needed to hold their activation to the very last, and then shoot whatever I could. But I kept activating them early and trying to get shots off with them. Uh, and that just did not work, and I knew I shouldn't have done that. I was trying not to do that, but for some reason I did it. Uh, and that's why I lost the game. It was pretty much, by turn 2, I knew I had lost, but I played up until turn 6. Uh, when I tried to play a counter command card just to wipe out as many of these units as possible. I had repositioned three of my scout units with their, uh, most of their full units left. And they were playing the constantly alert card to get all their standby tokens off. And fortunately the Imperial officer wasn't in range. So I wasn't able to get those orders off. And I was like, ah, dang it, that's why. Because my officer was in range, but then I moved her back to be back inside the zone to get an extra victory token. Um... And so that pretty much ended the game. Uh, my opponent was like, well, I guess we just call it here, kill points to kill points. And we'll just say, like, you get the two victory points, you get the seven. And he's like, and I'm like, yeah, that's cool. That, that sounds fair. And so, yeah, we did that. And that was a good trade, I think. <laughs> um, it turns out he actually didn't have a world's invite, and most of his friends did. So I hope that, I don't actually remember which player won this event, but I know that he was on the final table. Um, so I hope he won the event. Like I said, I knew what I had to do to win. I just did not execute those decisions I guess I don't even know why I didn't because I knew what I had to do I set myself up to make those decisions and then I just didn't do it I don't know so I call it fate I call it him going to worlds and I believe in him so that's why I'm okay with that loss <laughs> um, and it does show that my list can defeat I guess meta squads um, it just needs to not engage them sometimes but yeah uh, he could have just flew Boba and tried to kill the officer at the very end of the game, obviously, but the scout troopers, I could have just aimed standby with all of them and just set up a standby trap, and Boba would probably not be able to do that much against that. Um, so yeah, an unfortunate loss in round two that I, an easy game I could have won that I'll end up losing. Uh, I think I'm going to replace Battle Lion, I hemmed in in my deck with Battle Lines. My current battle deck is Disarray, Danger Close, uh, Rollout, and... Uh, hemmed in, which is getting replaced with Battle Lions now, because Battle Lions is a lot better for speeders, and it can actually work pretty good with Scout. I've tested it out a couple times now, and it works really well. Um, not actual games, just kind of movement testing, like deploying units and moving around. I'm like, okay, this is actually pretty good. <laughs> hemmed in, I've had really bad luck on. Um, I've either been the red or blue player on a map where my side of the board just has terrible terrain, or just not a good situation in general, so... Hemden's out just because of the bad luck. Overall, though, with the Scout 3, I was thinking I'd get to close range, but I realized against Force users, that's probably not the best idea. <laughs> um, and also, like I said, it's very terrain-dependent, I feel, so... Yeah, I'm just gonna go with Battle Lines. It makes my speeders deploy very far away from the enemies, and I like that. Um, okay, last and third match that I ended up losing was against a Separatist player that was piloting six Battle Droids Four of them with rocket launchers, two of them with repaired bots. Um, Kalani, super tactical droid, the one with reinforcements, and the other two, and three commando droid uh, units, not strike teams, uh, full four man units with deflector shields and the sniper. Um, and he played, he divulged his turn three pip card to reinforcement to play all of them at the end, after all my guys got to go, uh, which was fun. And uh, the map was Danger Close, deployment was Danger Close, the objective was Hostage Exchange, which I don't know what the, why that was in my deck. Um, I guess it was thought it was a better pick over KP and Intercept, which I realize it isn't, um, because Hostage is a very friend, Force User friendly deck. Not that I've ever actually played against a Force User with that objective, or at least a Force User that really did anything. Um, but I realize now that it's probably not the best objective I don't think it was that game that convinced me. I think it was just... Because I could have actually won that game. I made one very fatal mistake that made me not win that game. Um, I think it, I think the reason why I took it out is just because, yeah, Force users get too much advantage with this card. So I'm going to take it out, replace it with Intercept or KP. We'll see. I think either objective is about the same. I think I prefer Intercept just to get all those victory tokens accumulated, turns four, 2 and 4. I noticed my list with Tepes 4 6 Scouts tends to play pretty aggressively, trying to get the win by turn 3. So I think Intercept's better just to accumulate a lot of victory points and then hold one station to get the last couple for 8 and hope we have better kill points, I guess. Um, but yeah, I think overall 
Uh, okay, anyways, the game, sorry. Uh, danger close, hostage exchange, and the condition was uh, war weary again, which this time I don't think it actually triggered on anyone. It almost triggered on one of his B1s, but he was just barely in range of the commander, which was cool. I didn't even really think it was going to trigger, but <laughs> we had to double check measure, and I don't think they got any wounds in anyway, so it's all good. Um, but yeah, the game went really badly. I split my deployment up, half force in one, on one side, half force on the other side. He put all his B1s in the back at one side, and then all his commando droids in front of those units with the reinforcements. So, this basically meant that two of my scout troopers couldn't shoot for the entire game, because it was very, very little center map terrain. I think I fit like two scout trooper units behind it. I could have fit three, but I didn't want to risk all of them being there. Uh, so two of my scout troopers didn't get shots in until like round four or five. Um, one of my speeder bikes got picked off at range 3. The issue was is I was moving my speeder bikes behind some cover, which was working out for the first two units. The second unit, though, would require like a lot of like finessing and moving around and like just a lot of positioning time, basically. I think like a two-minute move, a two-minute activation or a three-minute activation, which is okay, but I was trying to go faster. Uh, we weren't late or anything. I was just, you know, trying to be courteous, go fast. Um, and that unit, that unit of speeder bikes ended up being at range three of a droid sniper, uh, the commando droid unit, and get and got wiped out in one shot. Um, and that was super unfortunate, and kind of lost the game. At that point, I knew the game was lost because activation count was down. Uh, his units were gonna just start swarming my scout troopers that were by themselves. And yeah, it's kind of just what happened. It was a slow burn loss. Um, almost tied the game. But I think we ended up calling it before I could potentially tie up the game just to, I don't know, save some time because it was getting late and we we're like, well, it's not really going to go that way anywhere. So we'll just call it here. And I'm like, yeah, that sounds good. So, um, yeah, so second game, massive deployment error. If I had not, if I had just put all my forces in one area, I would have been able to pretty much swarm the commando droids or at least swarm the B1s and leave the commando droids on one side of the map, I feel like. I feel like the split was just because they had reinforcements. I wanted to make sure I had enough guns to deal with them on either side. Um, I think I maybe should have just planned better in that case then. But overall, though, it was a fun game. Um, it's a fun tournament. I learned a couple things. Um, don't, be af don't split your forces up too much. <laughs> With Tempest Force, um, you do a little bit depending on the objective and, de and depending on how they deploy. But if all their units are starting to play together, just deploy all your units together. Um, and don't make silly mistakes that you don't not to, which I don't really know what the lesson there is, except for make myself feel bad. <laughs> um, yeah, so overall, that was a great tournament. I love the list, it works really well. I think I have made one or two card changes. I noticed the recon intels on the stormtroopers weren't really doing anything, so I took those off. Improvised orders for me through that the entire tournament only did one good change of activation, and it was that separatist list where it was turn four and it did not matter anyways. So I have got rid of that card and also got rid of one smoke grenade on one of the scout troopers for vigilance. The thought there is so that I can use emergency transpanders and keep one dodge token on one of my scout units. Because the issue with using transpanders for dodge tokens is they may or may not come in handy. So that might be a waste of 4 points. So Vigilance makes that a use of 4 points. And also, if a scout trooper decides to take a dodge token as one of their actions, they now go into the next round with 3 dodges. Which also seems pretty good. Um, so we'll see how that 12 points works out. Or if I need to change it out for something else. I think it should work. We'll see. Maybe I take off Vigilance and the Imperial Officer uh, personnel upgrade for a sniper on one of my scouts. We'll see. But the Imperial Officer is really clutch. Uh, really clutch my first game. Second game was really good. And my third game was also actually pretty good. So she's doing work. I'm definitely in favor of that. So yeah, anyways, hopefully next tournament we go a lot better. I was hoping to get to go 2-1 to one this tournament. But we went 1-2 to instead, which is unfortunate. But it is a part of the game. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little battle report. Um, all the footage was from this first game, obviously, which you can see the entire game over on the channel um and yeah i hope you guys enjoyed well may the force be with you good luck and get rock and rolling <laughs>